All right, last chapter of Galatians. Come and check it out. We're going to draw some conclusions, and there's some practical, applicable things for us here. So come and read it with me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bible Time. Thanks for joining me today. Craig here. And I want to share an awesome testimony with you. Um, after this section yesterday, um, talking about first it start, started with time walking in the walk in step with the spirit and then we talked about the kind of contrast between the works or the fruits or the evidences of walking in the flesh and the fruits of walking in the spirit i had somebody uh message me and say hey i just want you to know that before getting baptized there wasn't anything on that list of uh walking uh works of the flesh that we were not walking in there's they said we we were doing all of these and then since being baptized and giving our life to jesus and pursuing him there's uh evidence of every single one of these to some degree or another at, at different times in their life and so it's just so encouraging first of all just to hear uh testimonies and I know that not all that's attributed to this, of course. It's just all that God is doing in these people's lives. But um, I know that, you know, part of their journey is Bible time. Um, and actually, it's some friends that I think pretty much are committed to joining every single day, which is awesome. But uh, the glory goes to God and all that he's been doing in their life from leading the, them to him to uh, saving in the midst of depression and struggle to baptism to church involvement to helping each other read the word and all these things so for my friends out there thank you for the message and congratulations on uh, just the growth and what god's doing in your life and we're all on a journey and we're all moving forward and um May the Lord lead us. So, um, to me, it's just, again, a reminder that what we're involved here is not just some academic belief. Like, you know, I believe in some religion, and but this is a life transformation thing. Jesus is a life transformation God. And so, he takes broken things and puts them back together. He restores and nothing is outside of his power. So anyway, awesome to hear that testimony. If you have a testimony, I'd love to hear it. I'm sure other people would love to hear it. Maybe mention something in the comments or shoot me a message. You can email me at craig at theheartcda.com. I'd love to hear from you or, or DM me on Instagram or something like that. Anyway, thanks for sharing. We're gonna jump right in the last chapter of Galatians. Uh, for, for the matter of walking in the flesh of the Spirit, that's kind of, in a sense, what this whole book has been about. It's a letter that the first four chapters, he spent really, the Apostle Paul spent really addressing the issues of trying to accomplish righteousness via works of the flesh, in particular circumcision, but really any in, following any of the laws and trusting in our, our flesh ability to accomplish the laws and to obtain righteousness and he's saying hey we have to remember that it's it's through faith that we are righteous and that we are saved and it's all about Jesus's finished work not our work and then he got into that chapter 5 passage about um, the works of the flesh are all of these things but those who are led by the spirit are all of these things so anyway he looks like he's going to continue on with some really practical applications to this theology that he's been talking about and so it's important for us to listen to this. So anyway, sorry I've been talking a little while, but I wanted to show that testimony. Let's jump right in. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. I think that maybe this is a good key, especially in this season that we're living in. People can become, it seems like these days, so harsh. And um, we're called to restore each other. And... You know, sometimes that means calling out sin. 
but to do that in gentleness, to do that in love, to do that in a spirit that really wants to see somebody restore, not just to tear them down or point out what they're doing wrong. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Man, we need, we need this today. I wonder if maybe just for a second you could consider, is there anybody in your world that you can think of that has a burden that is, is heavy on them? Something that you could possibly help with. Maybe you have the financial means. Maybe you have a lawnmower and that widow needs her lawnmower. Maybe uh, you have an ear and you could you could call that person that you know just needs somebody just to listen and not offer advice. Maybe, I don't know. But like if this is something that's so important that he would say we can fulfill the law of Christ by walking with one another, by bearing each other's burdens, by carrying each other's heavy loads, that's something that we should consider. And so so many times we read these these chapters and it's, it's very deep and theological and we're like looking for the practical what do i do and here we are we're at we're at the chapter there's probably gonna be a lot of things and so i say we we grab a few that the lord has put his finger on in our heart and we try and walk them out for if anyone thinks that he is something when he is nothing he deceives himself but let each one test his own work and then and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor For each one will have to bear his own load. I don't get that. I don't know if you get that. Let's, I gotta start this over. So first he says, bear one another's burdens, okay? And then he says, if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself, but let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Hmm. I don't know. I don't I don't know if I get that. <laughs> He's talking about bearing burdens and then bear your own load man there's, there's got to be something more here that I'm missing I don't know if you're getting it but we can't all understand everything if you have insight on this leave it in the comments I'd love to hear anyway let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches do not be deceived God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows his own flesh to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are in the household of faith. Okay. God is not going to be mocked, and he wants us to know that what he means by that is that what, whatever you sow, you will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh will reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will reap from the Spirit eternal life. So what does it look like to sow to the flesh or sow to the Spirit? If you you don't know what this word sow means, I suppose uh, just it's like a farming term. It's planting the seed, sowing, sowing into the harvest. Not sowing with a needle, but sowing your seed 
planting seeds uh, as a as a farmer would and then expecting to reap if you plant a corn seed you should expect to reap corn and so this analogy is used many places in the scriptures and he's using it here uh, as you plant as you sow a certain type of seed either fleshly seed or spirit seed from the one you will reap a harvest a corruption plant and from the other you will reap eternal life plant so i think for me um, this passage does two things first to consider what am i sowing and then secondly to consider let us not grow weary in doing good for in the due season we will reap if we do not give up uh, the second thing would be to consider as I sow hopefully into the spirit am I able to stick with my path you know my my call my stick with whatever it is that God has asked me to do whatever good work uh, whatever it is that God's called you to do the, the thing that he's put on your heart your your area of ministry and service your uh, allocation of time your you know maybe um, I had somebody message me and say man why why does God not speak to me and I said you know do you read your Bible and pray and he says yeah I read my Bible I think I think he's doing Bible time I don't know how often but yeah, I read my Bible I pray and uh, I said, do you not feel that God's word is speaking to you? I mean, he's written it all down for us. And he says, yeah, I do, but I just don't know why I can't hear him in my mind too. And man, I just say to you, brother, keep going. You will reap the harvest in due season. Do not give up. That's a good work. Pursuing God for the sake of relationship, for the sake of knowing his heart. Keep going. You're 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 called to, to serve in that ministry or start that small group or, or lead that thing or you know, whatever, uh, don't give up. I know for me, like, I have a full, f more than a full-time job, and I just felt like this year, this whole thing, Bible time, is not necessarily part of my job. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to offer this sacrifice, which it has been. It takes a lot of time to do this, and production, and making the videos, and posting them every day. Um, but I knew that he, I, I believe that he asked me to do this and I am supposed to do this for a year. So I'm like a little over halfway through and it's been, it's been definitely a sacrifice of consistency. And so I've tried not to grow weary in doing good and trusting that it's reaching just exactly who it should reach. And maybe you're the one person and I know that my God is the type of God that loves to reach the masses, but he's always willing to reach the one. And I think that's a lesson for me that um, I want to have the biggest influence that I can, but I knew that he said, I don't care how many people watch those. You're not gonna stop if it has one view. You're, you're to do this even for the sake of one person. And so I am trying to walk out and, and do my best at obeying the Lord and, and following a passage like this I'm trying to sow in the spirit and you know what there's many times probably just like you that unfortunately I'll, I'll sow a seed into the flesh and when we recognize that we need to go and we need to uproot that seed not just cut off the plant but uproot the roots and everything and and try and disregard that as soon as we acknowledge it and and get rid of that um, in our life because we don't want anything to be growing from the flesh uh, but from the spirit and you know sometimes I don't recall how many things I've said and you may have not even heard another video from me but I just want to make sure that you know if you don't know what this word means the Greek word for flesh is sarx and uh it means more than just your skin. I know I've mentioned this a few times, but if you, if you haven't heard this, it's not just talking about your skin or your body. This is a biblical word that means like 
the lusts of humanity, the sinful desires of our eyes, the things that we pursue with our heart, the, uh, our sinful nature, all of those terms kind of describe like what he means when he says the flesh. So if you're sowing into something that's contrary to God, you're, you're pursuing, you're trying to grow, you're trying to chase after, you, you want and you desire and you're grasping for, and you're, you're doing things that are contrary to God's will in his heart, that would be sowing in, feeding the flesh. And the flesh stands in biblical opposition to the spirit. The spirit talks a lot about this in the book of Romans, which we will do before this year is over. But it talks about the contrast between the flesh and the spirit. And so, um, anyway, that's what that's talking about. So, let's continue and finish this book up, but I just want to encourage you to consider what, if at all, are the ways that you're sowing either into the flesh or the spirit. And on top of that, what are the good things that God has called you to do that maybe you've been growing weary in? And I just want to encourage you to keep going. I think the scripture is doing that. So, all right, let's finish it up. See with what large letters I'm writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make good showing of the flesh who would force you to be circumcised. And only in order that they may be, that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. What a beautiful sentence. Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. We've been crucified and separated from each other. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. I think what he means here is a new creation, like a new, like genuinely a new creation is what counts, not this one physical outward sign. Kind of like we were talking about my, my friends earlier, that they were living a certain life, and when they started following Jesus, they didn't just add some intellectual knowledge to what they believed. Their whole life was, was changed. They are... Uh, a new creation and probably not perfect people uh, struggle with stuff just like anybody else we all do but I know that at least I can say that you know like Paul said I am behold I am a new creation the old things have passed away and the new things have come uh, that's what it says about anyone who's in Christ in 2 Corinthians 5 and so this is what he's saying is like what matters is somebody becoming new not just this one physical act so anyway and as for all who walk by this rule peace and mercy be upon them and upon the israel of god from now on let no one cause you trouble for i bear in my body the marks of jesus the grace of our lord jesus christ be with your spirit brothers amen Awesome. That's what we have for Galatians and uh, chapter 6. There's definitely some takeaways here and some practical things that we can uh, apply to our life. But really the whole of the, the, the work is also applicable to us. Maybe not exactly in the same ways with the specific subject of, of circumcision. But I think generally speaking, as we've talked about throughout this letter, that the 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 battle between works and faith and the order of those two things and the motivation of those two things is very relevant to our life. And so I think maybe I'd just like to conclude this book with a prayer for all of us that we would walk in God's heart in regards to this message. And I wanna encourage you to spend some time in prayer as well. But let me just do that now. And thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll see what's coming up again, or not again, but new tomorrow. So hope to see you there. But let me say a prayer for us. Lord, I thank you for every person out there that's watching, joining, diving into your word, even if it's just one or 10 or 100. Uh, I thank you that you care about them. I pray for each one of them right now that you would speak to them, that they would know that you are for them, that, that they would know like Paul's been expressing, that, it, that our faith in your finished work 
is much more important than our ability to accomplish. Lord, I pray that for each one of us, our faith would be primary and our works would be a response to that. Our works would be a response to the relationship that we have with you, that we would not trust in our ability, in our, in our flesh, in our strength to uh, accomplish for us something, but that we would trust in you. Lord, I pray that you draw each person listening to the sound of my voice close to your heart, deeper and deeper into relationship with you. I commit them to you. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen.